Okay, so I am so pissed with this question. So many times people ask me, what is the best camera? What's the best laptop for photo editing? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know how, I mean, I, I understand if you ask somebody what camera do you use because you're curious, you've seen the photos and you want to know what photos, I mean, what camera is making those photos, but best camera, I mean, can you imagine the number of qualifiers or variables that means defining? Um, uh, best for what? Uh, someone recently asked me what's the best camera for photographing uh, runway? Uh, photographing the runway at a fashion show even that can have further qualifiers like where are you sitting how how big is the runway what is your position where are the models going to come from are you shooting details or are you shooting the full model so i mean if you're shooting from the photographer's pit if you're shooting from the audience you can't best camera i mean what do you want to do it's based on that what's your goal that's how you define what works for you and what doesn't work for you. You can't just go around asking people what is the best camera. It's like, who's the best person in the whole world? Well, for most people, it's your mom because, you know, she's the one who took care of you, etc. But some people's moms are, you know, quite horrible. So it's not a universal answer. Um, uh, then somebody asked me, what is the best laptop for photo editing? And uh, I don't know. I mean, if you ask me what laptop I use, uh, I use the, uh, it's a Lenovo Y510P. Why do I use it? I don't know because the boy thought it was a nice one and he could, I don't know, mod it a bit and it was not so expensive. It's great. I mean, it's faster than my desktop. I use it for photo editing for sure. But video editing is still better on my desktop. And I don't know if it's the best laptop. It's just something that I got. I mean, how... These decisions are so based on, you know, oh, this works, this doesn't work. I didn't go around looking. You can't even Google for this shit. Can you Google for it? Go Google it. What's the best camera? Like, what do you mean by what's the best camera? Please use qualifiers. I don't mind sharing what cameras I use. I use I use this sometimes. This is the Fujifilm uh, X100. Um, massive uh, focusing issues. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's great for some stuff. It's in some situations, this is the best camera. Then uh, at the Adobe event that I went to, oops, the Adobe event that I went to, they, they gave everyone in the audience this camera, which is the Fuji X-T10. And holy fuck, this is amazing too. I mean, and it has an 1855 lens and it's 2.8. And yeah, I mean, I shot uh, some of the runway photos this time at the uh, Amazon Fashion Week Spring Summer 16 using that. And there's a weird green tint on most of the highlights. So yeah, maybe that wasn't the best camera, but it wasn't, I wasn't on assignment. So that's okay. I think the photos came out great. Um, I also have the Nikon D800 and the Nikon D810. But I would say that the lenses are more important than the camera body. You need a good, great lens. And really, it's based on situation to situation. I have three lenses. I have the 1424 2.8. I have the 2470 2.8. And I have the 7200 2.8. Now, sometimes when I'm sitting in the photographer's pit and I'm on assignment for a client, then I'll use the 7200 because it lets me get details and I can shoot the full model. But if I want to do wide angle as well as portrait and 90% of the time that I use that lens is the 2470. And if I'm doing architecture or really wide angle stuff, then I use the 1424. I also have a 50 mm. It's a fuck all lens. It's plastic, but it works sometimes. You know, I don't want to lug around the 7200. It's so bloody heavy. So then I use the 50 mm. It produces some really amazing photos and it's a 1.8. So the bouquet is amazing and sometimes I don't want the bouquet. Sometimes so the wide angle lens works there and you just, you know, have a bigger, uh, what is it called? Bigger depth of field. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a camera technician. I'm not a laptop technician. I just, you, you, you use what you have and you make the best of it. That's the idea. So the best you can do is you can ask people whose photography or whose work you admire and you ask them what camera did you use for that particular shot? And if you want to know where they were sitting, how, what the environment was, what the lighting was, that's how you narrow it down. But you can't go around asking people what's the best camera. There isn't one. Oh, or as the, somebody said that the best camera is the one that you have. 
I've been doing blog posts using uh, my phone now. Yeah? I've got the, oh, I'm recording the video on it. <laughs> the HTC One M8. It takes great photos. If I'm not going to be printing them, you know, for art purposes, I can do a, a blog post with that. It works fantastic. You can't tell the difference most of the time. So yeah, in general, uh, be specific with your questions. Not just about photography or uh, anything. If you need answers, um, ask specific questions like uh, if I if I look at any photographer's work and I really like their work and I know I can have a conversation with them I'm going to ask them that hey you know I saw the assignment of yours the photographs were amazing what time were you shooting those were you in a helicopter and what lens did you use for those what camera did you use for those uh, was the goal to get art size prints for that or were you just blogging for it or so these are the qualifying questions what was the client brief um, what was the goal? Where are the pictures going to be used? What are they going to be used for? And then you say, okay, fine, you know, this was the lens and this was the camera that was used. Same with buying technology, any technology. Why do you buy a particular phone? I mean, sure, all of us like to say, I'm not affected by advertising, but yeah, we look at ads and there are some things that appeal to us and we end up buying that piece of tech. So the laptop was uh, more powerful than my desktop and at that time, this was the one I could afford. So that's the one that I bought. Someone is like, oh, but why don't you use an Apple? There's so many photographers and designers. That's like the laptop for you. No, I don't use iOS. I don't use Apple for editing or for anything else. I don't have a single iOS device. I don't really have anything against Apple except one, it's fucking expensive. And secondly, it's a closed fucking platform. So no, thank you. The only time I've actually considered uh, buying an Apple, and this is all Adobe's fault, Paul, Paul. <laughs> yeah, the apps. All the apps Adobe is producing and oh my god, the new ones, Adobe Slate, oh holy shit, storytelling, oh, you, you want that app. They're all for iOS because developing for Android is a pain in the ass. There are so many versions, so many device sizes, so many brands making it. So, you know, when you have to make an app for so many uh, various devices, it takes much longer. So obviously they prefer to first make it for Apple, which is supposed to be the platform and then they take it from there for Android and it takes a long time. So there's no, there's no best device. I know a lot of designers and photographers say that the best device for designers and photographers is anything that's Apple. I don't think so. Um, I love Fuji cameras. You can walk around with them. You can, you know, shoot uh, street style. Uh, I tried that also at uh, the fashion week that I was at. And of course, if it's a professional assignment, the last one that I shot was for Swarovski at the Bridal Fashion Week. That was all photographed on my Nikon D810 and I used the 70-200-2.8 Nikon lens. So you might want to go and check it out. I'll share the link in, my, uh, in the comments below or in the description below. But please don't ask people what is the best camera. It's, it's such a stupid question. It's just... It drives me up the wall. So if you want to drive me up the wall, yes, you can ask me that question. I know some of you are going to do that when you meet me next. Uh, but qualify qualify your, your question. Uh, be specific when you're asking a question. And the same applies to all the feedback I've been getting on my blogging uh, videos. Uh, how can my blog make more money? Look, if it's going to be a consulting session, uh, I have rates for that. You can email me. I'll tell you and we can discuss what works best for your blog how you can pitch to clients, who are your clients, who your audience is, I can talk to you about that. But if you want general advice about, you want to know how I do it, I can answer those questions. How much do I charge for a blog post? Uh, what are my deliverables? Uh, when did I start? How many paid blogs do I do in a month? Things like that. Those are specific questions. Those I can answer because that's what I'm doing. But I can tell you how much you should be charging for your blog posts. I don't know what your cost of doing a business, uh, cost of doing business is. Have you Googled? cost of doing business do you know what it even is that's a great place to start by the way if you're planning to price anything whether you're an independent photographer or an independent blogger check out cost of doing business uh, the photographer vincent lafore he wrote about it on his blog it's v-i-n-c-e-n-t l-a-f-o-r-e-t so check out his blog and he's written about this and there are resources you know you have google you have the internet you don't need to depend on an idiot like me to answer those questions. Figure out how much your work is worth. And there will be a bit of trial and error. And then, you know, you see, it's the same with cameras. If you are confused between two or three models, find out people who use those models, ask them, request them to test it out, test it and see what works for you. And there are, there are no right answers, really. I mean, it's all 
you need to figure out there's a lot of trial and error there's a lot of experimentation you need to take a lot of risks you might end up buying the wrong camera like i don't really regret buying this camera i mean it when it came out it was like oh my god look at this thing isn't it amazing but um if if you showed me this camera right now i wouldn't buy it because fuji has gone far beyond that first initial model now so i'm not saying it was a waste it was great i produced some great photos it's very convenient it was small etc but you know what i mean so yeah there are no best cameras there are no best laptops for anything and the the question somebody asked me about the best photo editing laptop well there are apps that you use for photo editing i mean i use lightroom i use adobe uh, in lightroom i use um, this set of presets called vsco visual supply.co check out the website they emulate film in for digital photos so i use that and i i build on that i tweak it further and depending on what photo it was where it was shot god the number of variables i get it's just so irritatingly stupid to go to anybody and say hey what's the best camera there isn't one all right see you <laughs>